Okay, folks, we're trying a new background right now, and we're going to try a new pen color to see if you can see them any better. As always, make comments down below if this is a general, I can't see a damn thing you're doing, then okay, I can work on fixing that. Otherwise, we're just going to keep going and experiment with things as we go along. So for today's discussion, we're going to be talking about cyanohydrins. This is a very odd functional group because I don't think anyone is really interested in cyanohydrins in and of themselves, but I think what, what scientists are interested in are the things that you can make from a cyanohydrin. Now, the formation of a cyanohydrin goes something like this. You start with a carbonyl, and we're going to start with butanol. Stop giggling, especially you, Kai. All right, the reaction we're going to, the reagents we're going to use here are hydrogen cyanide in the presence of potassium cyanide. And the product you make looks like this. Oh, let me undo that one because that looks terrible. Here's your product. All right. This is the cyanohydrin itself. You'll notice that what's happened is it is a carbonyl addition because the pi bond is consumed. You've added the new groups, the OH here, and the CN from there. So before we press merrily on with this, I want to give you a chance to work on this sort of by yourself. See if you can figure out the mechanism. So I'm going, you know, everything you need to know right here. There are all the reagents and everything you need. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to figure this out. So what I want you to do at this point, and I know I have absolutely no way of enforcing this, is I want you to hit pause. And then I want you to go ahead and go see if you can work through the mechanism. I'll meet you on the next page when you're ready. Are we all here? Oh, good. I'm glad we can get back to work. So, here we go. How does the cyanohydrin form? Except my pen was black there. I apologize. What, you can't read black on black? Cyanohydrin mechanism. We start with butanol. And the first step here is using hydrogen cyanide as our electrophile. More specifically, the hydrogen around cyanohydrin as our electrophile. So, oxygen grabs a hold of the proton, breaking the hydrogen-carbon bond. This is an equilibrium step, and what you get is here. Does this look pretty much like almost every other first step of the electrophile pathway you've seen? Absolutely, there's a reason we teach you the pathway as a trend. Now, we've got our cyanide group ready to roll. The cyanide group will do a nucleophilic attack at the carbonyl carbon and break open the carbon-oxygen pi bond. This one is actually a really easy step. And so, finally... Wow, that's really poorly drawn, folks. I apologize. But hopefully you can see what it is. Okay, now, this begs the question, why? Why do we care? What's the big idea? What, why is this important? Well, let's take a look. Like I said, the cyanohydrin itself is only of minimal interest to most scientists. What becomes cool here is what you can do 
with this cyano group? What can you do with this? This is where it gets interesting. Well, from here, you've got a couple of options. One of them is you treat this strongly with acid, heat, water, and time. This hydrolysis step takes a while. It's not particularly easy to do. And what you make once you do this is a carboxylic acid. Specifically, this is an alpha hydroxy. I'm off my side there, sorry. An alpha hydroxy carboxylic acid. These are really important in the cosmetics industry. Now, another use, another thing you can do here is this. You react the cyanohydrin, one, with lithium aluminum hydride followed by water. And your product here is that. You have reduced the cyano to an NH2. The general name for this process is a reductive amination. That is, we have taken something, we've taken a molecule, we've reduced it, and in the process, we have created an NH2. Now, that's all we got for this video about the formation of cyanohydrins. Real quick, the overall reaction is the carbonyl. I use an aldehyde. A ketone would work equally well with hydrogen cyanide and KCN. To get the cyanohydrin, we see over here on the far right. The mechanism itself, folks, this is like falling off of a log. It's so easy. The carbonyl oxygen deprotonates the HCN, breaking the hydrogen-carbon bond, generating the protonated aldehyde, which is your primed pump. It's ready to go. The cyano anion nucleophilically attacks the carbon and breaks it op it breaks open the carbon oxygen pi bond, and you wind up with this neutral thing down here that looks like it belongs in a Adams family movie. Sorry about that. I will own up to my mistakes, and this was the best I could do on this one. So this is the product you make down there. All right. Couple things I want to say about this reaction when you are working on it. And I'll skip to the end to talk about this. You'll remember, hopefully, with this as your starting material, and this was a combination of HCN and KCN to give you the cyanohydrin product. Mistake? What mistake? There was no mistake there. All right. This is the part right here that is worrisome. All right? This is the part where I think you should be concerned. Because the way this is done, the way this is made is potassium cyanide plus HCl gives you hydrogen cyanide and potassium chloride. Folks, 
For those of you who didn't know, hydrogen cyanide is <clears throat> is used in gas chamber executions. This is a nasty, nasty stuff. Really bad for you. The way this works is you have excess KCN. That way, only some of your cyanide is converted into hydrogen cyanide. The rest stays as the salt. Now, if anyone ever walks up to you and asks you to do this reaction, punch them in the throat and run as far as you can. Nothing's worth trying to do this. The last thing I'll say is over the years and because of Agatha Christie, people have associated the smell of hydrogen cyanide with bitter almonds. And indeed, humans can smell the hydrogen cyanide bitter almonds, but it's only about 5% of the people on Earth who can actually make out that scent. No, I've never tried. Shut up, Alex. Most people can't smell the HCN in these situations. For most people, it's just, what's that? And you're dead. All right? That's all for, no, you know what? That's not all for today. I want you to work a couple problems for me. Whoops, okay, I did something weird here. Let's try that again. I want you to tip, I want you to show me the mechanisms for this transformation And I want you to figure out how you can make, yeah, you know, we'll start with that. We'll talk about multi-step stuff when we're done with the unit. So I'm not going to show you this. It should be easy enough for you to figure out. Take a good long look. Next time we're going to be looking in a bit more, a bit more depth into reductive amination. For Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Good day and good gaming.